So what is the difference between red light therapy and infrared bulbs? If you've been looking into red light therapy, then there's a chance that you came across these infrared bulbs, which look very similar and emit, you know, also a red light. And you may have thought that maybe these can give you the same benefits that are associated with red light therapy. So what we're going to do in this video is break down the key differences between these two forms of light. And then based on the benefits that you're trying to achieve, you'll be able to figure out, you know, which one is best suited for you. What's up guys, it's Nick Kutsia here and welcome to the Mychondria YouTube channel. On this channel you're going to find content all around light and its effect on your health and performance. If you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our future content then I highly suggest that you click both the subscribe and the notification bell so that you get notified as soon as we release future videos. Now for today's video we're talking about the differences between red light therapy and infrared bulbs and we've actually done a video on this exact topic uh, in the past but it was really low quality you know the sound wasn't that great yet it has been one of the most popular videos on this channel and I think the reason for that is it's a very very common question you know what is the difference between you know red light therapy and infrared bulbs sometimes we even have on our other videos you know someone will ask can I achieve these same benefits with and then they reference an infrared bulb. So just to give you a quick understanding of what an infrared bulb is, they often look something like this and they're often sold um, for like animals. So often like chicken coops, they'll use them as a form of heating. And the thing with these types of lights is they do emit red and infrared light, but they don't pinpoint any specific frequencies. So what they do is they emit a wide range of light across a wide spectrum and a majority of the type of light that they emit produces heat. So where red light therapy uses only red and near infrared light, these bulbs emit red, near infrared, and mid, and far infrared. And the key differences between these two types of light, or these, these frequencies, is the red and near infrared light is specifically absorbed by the mitochondria within your cells. And that's you know, essentially how red light therapy works. Because your mitochondria are absorbing it, they are then able to use this in order to increase energy production within your cells. Now as soon as you go to the longer wavelengths of light, which are emitted by infrared bulbs, what you find is instead of being absorbed by your mitochondria, this type of light is now absorbed by water. And that is why you'll see things like infrared saunas, which will use bulbs exactly like this in order to heat you up and produce a, you know, like a detoxing effect, something similar to what you would get with a normal sauna. So it's not to say that these don't have their place. I use one of these still as a light, um, especially in the colder months, because it you know, produces a nice warm and kind of relaxing glow. It doesn't emit any blue light, which is nice as a light source. But because it produces a lot of heat, what it means is you can't get very close um, to the device because it, you know, obviously there's a much higher risk of burning. So if you compare this to a red light therapy device, such as the MyLight Move from Mychondria, this emits the shorter wavelengths that we mentioned earlier that are specific for your mitochondria to produce more energy. And because these don't uh, get this type of light doesn't get absorbed by water, it doesn't produce heat within your tissues. So I can take this and place it, you know, right up against my body and there is, you know, zero risk of this burning. Because of that, you know, there's no because there's no heat production, it also means we can crank the power up on these devices to extremely high um, powers because we don't have to worry, you know, if I was taking this infrared bulb and I started using a much higher wattage, a much more, uh, larger power output, it's going to be producing a lot more heat, which means I can't get as close. So with a red light therapy device, A, we're able to use the specific frequencies. We can pinpoint with an LED light the specific frequencies that stimulate your mitochondria. B, because it doesn't produce any heat, we can make them a lot more high powered. And again, because we, it's not producing heat, you can um, target or get a lot closer to the device. And that means it'll penetrate deeper within your tissues. So infrared bulbs, they definitely have their place. You could use them as a heat source, or if you're looking for like a detox um, effect, similar to a sauna, then you'll see these kind of lights in infrared saunas. But when it comes to mitochondrial stimulation, there is nothing that outshines red light therapy. It is literally the goal where we are upregulating this energy production with these key frequencies that are not absorbed by water, but are absorbed specifically by your mitochondria. And that's why, you know, we see such a wide range of benefits with red light therapy is because all your cells within your body, they have mitochondria within them. So if they're producing more energy with this type of light, then they're able to perform their specific functions better. So, you know, if it's a muscle cell, your muscle cells are now going to be able to repair themselves faster or to build more muscle tissue. And that's why you would get, you know, faster muscle growth. 
If it's a hair cell, now your hair follicles are able to you know, be stronger and it's less likely that you're going to experience hair loss when using red light therapy. Another example, if your skin cells have more energy, they're going to be able to produce more collagen and you get this anti-aging effect which has been scientifically proven with red light therapy. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about red light therapy then I highly suggest that you check out the playlist that we have on this channel. I'll leave a link to it um, up above here and also in the description of this video and in there we cover specific scientific studies per specific benefits and show you some of the benefits that have been proven with red light therapy. If you guys have any questions from today's video then please feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Otherwise I hope that you have a fantastic day further and we will chat again soon. Cheers!